Yeah, it's a poignant, poignant question, poignant situation. You know, so I'm picturing this. So the, the, the situation here is a, a woman who's feeling pretty beat down, pretty in a pretty dark place, um, but loves to draw, loves to do art. And when she starts doing it, she comes alive for a few days or weeks or even months. But then this feeling of what's the point encroaches upon it and she shuts down and she stops doing it. So I think that on the one hand, we have to be able to do things not always knowing what the point is because we do not know right now how to get to what I call a more beautiful world. We know that it exists and we know that we have a role to play in bringing this world into reality. But we don't know exactly how to get there. We don't have a roadmap that, because a roadmap would, would depend on our existing concepts of how change happens and how the world evolves. But the world that we're moving to is bigger than those concepts. It is literally new territory. So, so we don't have a map to get there and therefore we can't rely on what our mind tells us is um, sensible or not sensible, that what's the point or what's not the point. Our mind says, well, drawing pictures and painting pretty pictures, that's not gonna help us get to a more beautiful world. Working on your, your, your faces, you know, your, your drawing technique, I mean, what good is that gonna do in the context of everything that's happening on this planet? However, if you accept that we don't know how this world works, that our, that our understanding of causality is very, very limited, and in fact comes from the story of separation that holds the world as a bunch of, of force-driven particles, generic masses bouncing around without intelligence, when we accept that, we do, that, that that story of how change happens might not be right, then we're plunged into the mystery where we have to rely on some other impulse to guide us in making choices about how to spend our time and how to devote our gifts. So one of those impulses could be, what is it that makes you come alive? And to do it for no other reason than because it makes you come alive, because it gives you a feeling of life. Ultimately, what we are in service to is life. The current civilizational setup is in service to death. The planet is dying around us and we are headlong. We, the dominant civilization, are headlong converting all that is alive into products. To serve the opposite direction, to serve life, means first and foremost serving life within yourself and accepting what makes you come alive as a as a valid source of information to guide your choices. And when what's the point encroaches upon them, name and recognize that as a voice of the old story. And one more thing, that, that the pain of that, the deadening, the deadening of that, that even also, it also comes from a beautiful place that's so yearns to be of good service. So I, I see in that question, I see a, uh, a sincerity that really wants to, to be useful, um, that really wants to participate in this beautiful happening. And so I would say when the feeling of futility comes up, to go underneath it to that living spark of generosity, really it's generosity, it's, I'm here to serve, I'm here to give, I'm here to, to contribute. That's what's underneath even the, the that's, that's what the um, voice of what's the point co-opts. That's the energy that it co-opts and turns against yourself. So to validate that and to understand that that voice is um, using the, intuitions and concepts of the story of separation 
and then to say, yeah, it is okay to trust what makes me come alive. That's how, that's what I would offer to this woman to, to resolve her, um, her, her doubts and her, her cycle that, and, and I'm not saying that drawing and painting is the be all end all of her journey. All it is perhaps is the next step an evolutionary step. And there might be other steps in her life too that also give her the feeling of coming alive. And then maybe when you do something for a while and it made you come alive, but eventually maybe it doesn't make you come alive anymore. It becomes tedious, it becomes routine. And the, the flow of life is going to something else because life is, if nothing else, it is alive. It's not static. It takes us on a journey from one place to another to another. It's like water flowing from one channel to another to another. And so it's not about, okay, I found my gift. I found the expression of my life force for this lifetime. Uh, maybe it will carry you through a lifetime and maybe it won't. So it's constantly listening to what makes you come alive, what gives you a feeling of excitement, the desire to wake up in the morning and engage your day happily, like to trust that, that is, an essential guidepost when our logic about what makes the world change is no longer trustworthy.